Oh. <laughs> Hello. That wasn't meant to happen. We're now live with me. What happened to the Hands Up for Trad introduction? Well, hello, welcome. Fesker Ma, how are you? <laughs> um, not so nice today in uh, Loch Lomond. Uh, it's not, it's just looking out the window. The, the loch's a bit, it's a bit windy out there. And uh, yeah, it's a bit cold actually. It's a, it's a bit cold and I, I suppose what I did to do that is I took a little visit to a, a famous American cultural establishment and had some meat on a... No, I didn't have any meat. I had a roll with um, some food on it. So that was quite nice, actually. It's been a good day to start. You can see I'm totally thrown by the fact that my introduction didn't work here. Um, so uh, remember and tell us where you're watching from. Um and of course, luckily, the most warming thing about today is our guest. So please welcome our Musicians of the Year nominees who are sponsored by the University of the Highlands and Islands. Uh, pianist and producer, Vary Hall, songwriter, Finlay Napier, and harpist and composer, Ingrid Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to have an audience. <laughs> Oh, it's nice to see you. Um, I was just wondering this morning, Vary, is there any snow in uh, Aviemore yet? I think on the hills, there's definitely a good dusting of snow. <laughs> and are you, are you, you have heading? to go for the chairlift company. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely a dusting. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not heading out on your skis later then? Well, I'm all sorted. There was, they had the Cairngorm Ski Club. Uh, sail at the weekend and uh, so we're all kitted up ready to hit the slopes <laughs> as soon as it happens <laughs> <laughs> Do you get quite a lot of snow near you Ingrid? Well, we do, not really down at uh, ground level, but obviously we we have the rival ski area in ours. So take that, Cairn Gorms, Nevis Range, outdoor capital of the UK. <laughs> so yes, we're primed and ready too. But uh, yeah, if it ever happens. <laughs> well, they did say you were going to get four days of snow next week in Glasgow, so you never know. Yeah, get get your skis ready <laughs> for gardener. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, before we get started uh, chatting, we are going to listen to another one of our Trad Video of the Year nominees. It's uh, Lapwing, the band Lapwing, and their track Pretty Girl, and this is their Valtos remix.
was uh, Pretty Girl by Lapwing, the Valtos remix. And uh, <coughs> check out uh, uh, the other Valtos re remixes. They've done quite a few different artists, and they're all great. There's a great one in Mech Lear I was listening to the other day there, and the Project Smoke one as well. Uh, really good, actually. Great, really interesting music. So, guys, I was just thinking about this beforehand. You both over lockdown you, you all of you you've all been quite busy you know watching what you've been doing on social media what gives you the energy to continue creating so much finley because you have been able to tell <laughs> fear of like how am i gonna pay for all of this like yeah fear mostly uh fear but also um I, I don't know if in terms of like my songwriting, I, I mean, I, I, yeah, fear is a, is a is a contributing factor, but but also like I I I don't really know why I write songs. I just do. So I I, I have this thing where that will just happen anyway, um, and then it, it, then I want to tell everybody about what I've done. <laughs> So fear and ego, basically. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Ingrid? Um, well, yeah, probably the fear factor. I agree with Finley wholeheartedly in that. It's like, what else am I going to do? But I think, um, yeah, the lockdown thing, I think probably for lots of us, there were projects sort of in the bag that had to be done. And it was just that <laughs> reimagining and reworking of everything, which actually took a huge amount of energy. I find that really hard, that like, OK, stop. OK, go again. OK, stop. And all that. And I found like last year in particular, it was like everything halted. And then that sort of padding through the summer, can I get this recorded? Can you do that? Trying to record different online elements, you know, of the stuff that you maybe were going to go out and do live, which uh, was exciting and horrific all at the same time, you know, because none of us are lighting engineers and sound engineers and all those other great skills that go into it. And then there was that full on panic at the end of the year because everybody wanted projects to happen. So I guess that was part of it, you know, because a lot of the work is sort of so planned in advance. So you had to get around to it somehow. But yeah, it was it was kind of exhausting. I don't know if you felt that, Vary. <laughs> well, it's interesting because uh, Vary, uh, you were at the start as lockdown hit, you were all ready to go with the album Airs. And the the exhibition and everything, and then suddenly it it stopped. That must have been great for that because you've been doing gigs and the exhibitions, been on the road. Late. That must be so exciting. Yeah, I mean, at the time it wasn't exciting. It was you know you put so much work into organising concerts, but for me, I was learning about um, trying to book an art exhibition as well and. Uh, it took a lot of planning and of course when it's all, all everybody's work was pulled from under them so that was a real struggle so it was just like I suppose a shift of focus for me and I was lucky I, I was uh, doing an album for Mary McMillan last year and that kind of that was a really nice focus on somebody else's music and um, but it's it's great now to be able to take that music and that project although maybe in a way, my head has kind of moved on a bit, but mm -hmm. it's been really nice to deliver the thing that we worked really hard to do, I suppose. And you've been, uh, the, there's an exhibition that accompanies the album Airs as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, so uh, the exhibition is by the artist Beth Robertson Fiddis, um, and she, her stuff is just stunning. They're mixed media paintings. Uh, really large paintings and she came to the recording uh, at the time she came and spent a bit of time uh, when I was recording and then we kind of swapped ideas over the course of a year so I would send her some of my music as it was developing and she would send me some of her paintings as they were developing and it wasn't intended to be a kind of touring exhibition but that's just what it turned into and um I think she's got 12 pieces that are part of the Ayers exhibition. And so they've been in two two venues so far in Atlantis and also in the toll. They're currently in the toll booth in Stirling. And they're just like really stunning pieces of work, really large paintings that I suppose are inspired by the water and the West Coast. And uh, yeah, we kind of have similar inspiration. Um, 
in terms of landscape and sounds and sights and things. So it's been it's been amazing working with her. So we could actually, because Stirling's not far away from me, actually, so I could take a wee trip up to Stirling Tollbooth and see the paintings. Do you know when they're on till? Yeah, they're on till, I think they've been extended. So that I think they're on till the 25th or 26th of November. And it's part of our collaboration during the concerts. I kind of have a, a backdrop of her paintings done in quite a... Um, an abstract way, I would say, uh, that Hamish McLeod pulled together a, a film that accompanies the music. And then for her exhibition, the music is playing behind her paintings. So it, it's kind of worked from both angles, which has been really nice. Um, but yeah, they're there for another couple of weeks, certainly. Um, so you should go and see them there. Amazing. I'm going to head up, actually. Because, uh, Ingrid, you have an animation that's out with your uh, latest release. Um, how uh, do, are you playing, when you perform as that uh, animation, of, what, can the audience watch it at the same time? Yeah, it's very much part of it. So, <clears throat> Message in a Bottle or Brass of Uchel, that was Nature Scott that asked me to put that together. When, when 2020 was supposed to be the year of Coast and Waters and not the year of the other C <laughs> e word, <laughs> um, then that was done for it. And it was done to sort of celebrate. It was I worked with their marine team and it was done to celebrate Coast and Waters and all marine life and, and kind of promote a lot of the work that they do to to do with basking sharks and birds and whatnot and they very much wanted a visual element in that and you know as i know any of you that have worked in it with animation you know it's a really really slow process it's a really costly process but we really wanted to get part of it in it so about four minutes of the whole hour-long audiovisual piece um is animation but it's sort of the title track of the album it sort of covers the the arc of the whole story of the message going into the bottle, going into the sea and all the creatures that it sees and environmental impact and all those things and our relationship with the sea as well and industry and whatnot. So, yeah, so that was really, it's really exciting. As Vadi was saying, when you're working with visuals and that sort of two way, like who influences who, like I spoke to Kat Bruce about my idea and said, this is what I want, that's what I want. And, and I think as musicians, well, I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I used to be quite involved with art when I was younger and painting and whatnot. So you've you've usually got a really strong idea of what you want to see, but you maybe don't have the kind of graphic skills to pull it off. And you hope that whoever you're working with, you've got that um, connection and that that they just get it. And she totally got it, and it was brilliant. And it sounds like Vary, you've got the same sort of experience uh, with the artist that you were working with. But it's nice to go both ways on that as well, and and get some inspiration from them too. Yeah, oh, it's amazing, and and uh, Vary the, I mean, as well as, as that, you've uh, produced Mary McMillan's album this year as well. Yeah, so I think was that last year? I don't, I can't even remember <laughs> when that. <laughs> that was, but I think she released it this year. She released it earlier this year, so we maybe finished it at the start of the year. Um, and then I've I'm I'm working on. Uh, Gillibree to McMillan's second album at the moment. So, did the um, family get um, a discount? Well, I'm the, I'm the producer to the McMillans, and there's twelve of them, so I'm going to be busy. <laughs> It's like the old clan system when, you know, each kind of clan had a piper and a bard and a producer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you know, but it's just, it's lovely because they're both su such different singers. Mary is very, like, a, a very traditional singer and all of the songs that she chooses are really old Gaelic songs from South Uist and that she grew up with. And then Gilbreach is writing his own songs and... Um, and the, yeah, it's just they're completely different, but uh, all uh, obviously of of the same clan. <laughs> it's actually it's interesting you say that because when you listen to the album, it's not a it's not a it's not a traditional sounding album, and I don't mean it in a sort of negative way. I mean it's actually I feel found it quite modern while listening to the album, the production of it. Yeah, I mean, Mary, you know, she's a, um, yeah, she's a, an obviously a native Gaelic speaker, but she's definitely got a spark about her. And um, we just tried to kind of bring that to the album as well. Just something that, like you say, it's not, com it's not completely traditional, but it's got elements of that. And 
um, just trying to bring the songs to life. That's always, I suppose, what uh, I hope to do. Amazing. And I just wanted to have a quick chat because this is your last year of being a accompanist in the BBC of Scotland Young Traditional Musician Award. What did you reckon the other day there? Is it 11 years? I think possibly <laughs> we've kind of lost track. Uh, but I think it, I think it's eleven years we've been doing that, so it's um, it's about time we passed it on to someone else. Do you have any special memories from it? I think the I, I certainly from the shock of a winner memory was Paddy Callahan getting it, um, and if memory serves, he was in the RCS that year. I I think. That final was in there, and I just remember he kind of turned around and looked at us when his name was called, and he went completely white <laughs> and just into shock. And he was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and that, that was really special because he really didn't expect to win it, and um, I was really chuffed that he did. So that's that's certainly a standout memory. But oh, it's, been, it's been great, and I was thinking if it's – the 11th year we've obviously played with like over a hundred semi-finalists which is just frightening and uh seeing all it, it's been lovely to kind of keep track of all the the young guns coming through and get a chance to kind of play some music with them and um that's been really lovely just meeting them all and making some nice music but it's um yeah we'll, we'll have a good final and uh, see who comes out on top there well i mean uh before we listen to a video of yours, Vary, we can't really go on without mentioning the BBC Radio 2 Young Traditional Musician Award, Ingrid. Because really, that, oh, was, no. that was the major award, really. Well, I mean, that was the highlight of my career. You know, 13 years old, it's been downhill since then. You can't have an interview without it, even 30 years later. <laughs> Come on, child prodigy. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at your website today and it's still front and front and center. <laughs> Listen, I need to dine out in that until I die. Even when they're wheeling me out with the arthritic hands and I can only play slow ears on the heart, I will still be using that. <laughs> That's oh, oh, fantastic. Well, let, let's have a wee listen to ears uh, from Vary. And I think that the video that we're going to watch is the video that you were talking about where you had some of the imagery on top of the, the keyboard, hopefully. <laughs> Unless you, unless you win. <laughs> For everybody at home, we're just, uh, Vary has left and she's still in the building. <laughs> well, there she is here, look. <laughs> uh, lovely seeing you all. Yeah, we should just say that we're all yeah, going to the Trad Awards on the 4th of December, including Vary, and we're just working out where we can sit so we can have the biggest party and where Vary can have the biggest party all night. <laughs> Oh, that would be enough from her then. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so um, continue to tell us where you're watching from at home. Hi to Ray from Meikle and hi to David from Cheshire. Uh, and hi to Gail. It's great to see that you've had some new poems published in Scots. Keep that coming. Right, so um, Finlay, uh, you've got a new album out. What's it called? Who is on, that's going, what's it called? Is who is on it? It's called It Is What It Is, and uh, <laughs> it was me and Angus Lyon live in the studio. Um, and then we said, that's all we're going to do, just piano and vocal and guitar. That's all there'll be. But we'll just get Donna Machocha to sing a little backing vocal on this song. Or maybe we can get her to do another one. And then Gillian will maybe sing a wee backing vocal on that one and maybe play a wee bit of fiddle. And it just all got a bit out of hand. <laughs> so there's now, I've got Louis Abbott from Admiral Flat Fallow playing drums. Ewan Burton's playing bass. Um, Gustav Lundgren, who played on my VIP record, he's playing slide guitar. That was quite funny because we asked him just to play slide guitar and he messaged back and said, I think it could do with a wee bit of brass, so I sent you a full brass <laughs> section as well. <laughs> and then he was like, and I think you should have brass on this song too, so he did that. Uh, Tara Lightfoot, a songwriter um, from Rockstar from Canada, she is on it as well, she's brilliant. If you haven't heard from uh, heard of Tara Lightfoot, you should check her out. Um, and then Megan Henwood, my, my um, story song scientist pal. She uh, sang on a few tracks as well. So uh, loads of guests. So the project just sort of grew. <laughs> One day, and then we did like, oh, we'll do two days. Oh, we'll just do three. So me and Angus did three days. Um, and we did 15 songs. And then we decided um, I, to add people. And people just add, sent stuff in from afar. And it worked out really, really well. Um, it was more of a sort of, sculpting process than a building up process though because we had so much stuff <laughs> by the yeah, end of it, it i think good. it's the second track on it it's like it's got a gospel choir on it or something that's what it sounds no, like no that's with. that's just donna <laughs> <laughs> just donna in her bedroom <laughs> well, so... yeah she's really really good at doing backing vocals like exceptional at doing backing vocals because it is a skill i think it's one of those things when bands go into the studio it's like, oh, we'll just do the backing vocals last, we'll just because it'll only take ten minutes, you know. And inevitably, it's like, God, we needed a whole day for this. But when you get someone like Donna, and she can, she she can do it in like, yeah. If you give her a day, she can do loads and loads and loads of really interesting things and stack up oohs and ahs and some of the wee ideas that she sang are things that I'd come up with that I'd put on the demo, so she copied that and improved on them. So, uh, improved on them greatly because I'm a terrible backing vocalist. Um, my I, I, Nick Turner used to laugh at me because he said it was like he'd set me up for a backing vocal and I'd via every <laughs> note that wasn't anything I would find my way back to the home, <laughs> back to like swooping down through you know like some kind of uh, uh, Sufi singer into the into the home note. Um, yeah. Uh, it's good to see you compare yourself to some of these great Sufi singers as well. Oh, no. Like, <laughs> like a pissed Sufi singer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my um, God. Just not, yeah, just not, I'm just not great. Just Basically, I'm just not great at backing vocals. Um, so... Uh, Unlike but, the Sufis. Un, well, but <laughs> unlike Donna Machocha and Megan Henwood, you know, who, and Gillian as well. Gillian's very, very good at it too. Um, and just so quick. Because it's that way where, you know, I, I don't, maybe people don't know this, but often what you're, you're asked to do is sing the, the same backing vocal twice. So not only do you have to sing the part, you have to match it to the lead singer's voice, uh, phrasing which will change from, which in my case changes from chorus to chorus. So you have to do everyone separately. You can't copy and paste. And then you have to do it again, a double it up. And then if you're singing a second part, you double that part as well. So two backing vocals is actually four and every single chorus and every single piece is different. So it's quite a laborious process. Um, and I'm really glad that I wasn't involved with it because I don't have the patience. <laughs> I just sort of said, can you do something a bit like this? Or Angus um, Angus had amazing ideas on um, uh, It Is What It Is, the title track, and also the last track. 
he had really clear ideas of what he wanted and there was no way in the world that I was going to be able to sing those parts but Donna um, can read music as well um, which is a skill I still don't possess uh, and was able to, 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 to sing these pretty crazy parts he'd written so that was really exciting all right, we should give a wee um, shout out to Angus as well. Angus Lyon, you're talking about. Angus uh, Lyon has a, the studio, the uh, Grand's Hoose Recordings down in South Lancashire. And not that we're in competition. However, there is a brilliant studio in Glenfinnan called... Come on, the old laundry! Come on, the old laundry! <laughs> <laughs> At the other end of the country. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're looking, to, if you are a budding recording artist, there's great studios in both all over the country. To be honest, actually, yeah. well, I think yeah. both studios have that wonderful thing. You guys have got a lovely piano as well, don't you? Well, not anymore, actually. No, we d we did oh, have no. a piano, and you know, and as a pianist, I mean, it breaks my heart. But I'll tell you what the issue was: is although I used it all the time and I loved it. A lot of the uh, artists, when they were coming in, those that didn't use it, it was just a grand piano taking up a lot of space. And when ah. you're in the Highlands, you're trying to get somebody every time, if somebody did want to use it, you're tuning it. And to try and get somebody all the time, it became a bit of a hassle. So much as I hate the whole techie keyboard getting piano sounds, oh, we've had to go down that line because we just oh, weren't really? using it enough. We didn't, couldn't justify it at all. Yeah, it's sad. So the only piano enough. we've got is behind me now in the house. <laughs> It's funny because we've got like an old piano in our wee studio space in Glasgow, and mm -hmm. and and it's I've I've never had a piano before, but um, well, and it's like man, this thing needs tuned quite a lot. It's quite expensive, but I couldn't imagine running a studio and having to. Yeah, well, I think one. especially you know because if you're recording it, you know yourself, it's under a magnifying glass. You cannot uh -huh. have stuff out of tune. So yeah, that was that was tough. So anyway, bye bye piano. <laughs> <laughs> Not electro. <laughs> yeah, and Finlay, you mentioned Megan Henwood. It, what, you've, you've just released a, a new EP with a story song scientist as well. Tell us about that. That's um, a kind of, it, it's, it's a side project, but it's quite a big side project. So Meg and I met at a songwriting retreat and we had this idea. She'd been away in Nashville and she'd been writing songs with like um, budding country stars and and I was, I was like, oh, I've always wanted to do it. What was it like? And basically, she was like, it's pretty hard going because they were not looking for anything exciting. They were literally wanting, you know, pickup trucks, beer, you know, like a really sort of just very plain songs. They didn't want anything out of the ordinary. They wanted very... Anyway, and I said, oh, I've got this idea for a song about maths. And that's kind of how we, how we clicked. Um, is wrote, we wrote a song called End of Numbers. Do you not mean math? That's the American yeah. way of saying it. Come on, <laughs> get on board. <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, Meg's from Oxford. She's not actually American. She just got All right. <laughs> she's got flown out there. So, so yeah, it's about <laughs> math. Anyway, so we did that, and it went very well. But when we were out on the last tour, we realised that actually this would make a good show like um, for like an arts centre kind of thing. Um, so we got funding from Arts Council England to turn it into a, a into a show. So now we've got like A1 foam boards and uh, lab coats, and uh, we're like an episode of uh, um, an episode of uh, of Tomorrow's World from the late seventies. We've got I've got like brown flares and uh, a pink shirt and all that, so with a big collar and stuff. Uh, and we go on as the story song scientists, and we do the show. And a lot, a lot of the songs are, are are more stories than about science. But we have, we're about, I think we're about sixty percent science now. Uh, uh, the the songs, um, but it's also like the stories behind them that that are so interesting. Um, and we've got yeah, and we've released this new EP called Quantum Lyrics. Um, so we were just, we've just finished touring. See what that. you're doing there. That's clever. Very good. Well, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was Meg's. It was Meg's idea. But so we've made this EP, which has kind of turned into a sort of radio ballad thing. So there's little little joining tracks that, that sort of join the join the songs together. So if you listen to it on Spotify, you just get the five songs. But if you buy the CD, um, you get uh, you get the full sort of radio ballad experience. But it's been it's been really good and it's gone down really well. And we've been doing stuff like literally recording every single gig. Um, to analyse the chat between songs so that actually we end up with something that really is 
an almost scripted show. Um, and that's so we're extremely grateful to the Arts Council of, of England for letting us do that because it's, um, it, it, yeah, but it's been very exciting. It's been quite a steep learning curve. And also, you know, you think it's bad having to lug a Clarsack in and out of the car. It is. <laughs> wait, wait, <laughs> wait. Like, I had no idea, like, carting a set around with you. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like we filled an estate car, um, even had to like leave guitars at home and share guitars. Like that's how that's how much <laughs> stuff we had. It got quite frustrating. <laughs> well, uh, go to finleynapier dot com to find out more about that. I mean, it does occur to me that uh, maybe Megan and Donna could get together and actually, do they need you? No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. No, they have perfectly. Perfectly good solo careers without me getting in their way. Yeah, like, we're no, going to have a amazing. we're going to have a listen to one of your songs, uh, Finlay. I've never been wrong. I've never been wrong. I've never been wrong. So sure am I. that you feel this way I'm sorry that you chose to burden me with this today but you know how it goes you get garrulous and sad you turn it all around and somehow I'm the one who's bad I'm sorry backing down is weak I'm sorry you chose someone as strong as me I don't know why you cry like I'm guilty of some crime It might happen, baby, you could be right next time I've never been wrong I've never been wrong So sure am I Never been wrong. Fantastic, Finlay, and uh, a nice bit of uh, marketing behind you as well. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, thanks to the Global Music Match thing. Uh, they were uh, they helped me do these videos. Um, what's the place called? Can't even remember. It's where everyone was going in Glasgow to, to do their live streams and stuff. Des Design um, Bright. A very good company. Look them up, though, if you can. I, can't, I totally can't remember what they're called. It's gone completely gone out of my head. But the thing that I remember is, like, pouring my very heart and soul out to the toilet door. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just really, like, getting into it. You know. And... Like you could see sort of some people behind screens and desks and stuff and just the toilet door right in front of you. So, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully the only way is up then. Uh, <laughs> no, it's just like my normal gigs, really. <laughs> uh, a quick uh, hello to ZM watching on YouTube from Colorado. Thanks for great conversations with some artists. Uh, no, he actually says thanks for some great conversations with great artists. <laughs> 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 so England um, I was uh, looking on your website today um, one of your many websites I have to say the Hendersons of Loch Aber are custodians of a musical heritage stretching back several centuries that's pretty cool I know I'm pretty old me <laughs> <laughs> yes the Hendersons were the hereditary pipers to Machgian of Glencoe the McDonald sect in Glencoe, which is pretty famous. So, yeah, there's music in the blood, <laughs> not pipes in mine. But there you go. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever? Did you ever learn the chanter of that? No, I didn't actually. No, the harp was uh, enough. No, Alan, my brother, Alan, older brother, he plays pipes. My other brother, Ewan, and Ashley did as well. So there are definitely pipers uh, in the family. But uh, no, my good, I'm amazed the kids that stick with the pipes. It's hard. You know, it really is. By the time you, it sounds hellish for a long time. It's like the fiddle. 
It really does. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't sound good for a long time. And then suddenly it comes good. So fair play to all the young folk and the grown-ups sticking with it. <laughs> and uh, as, as we were saying, we were talking earlier about the, your message in a bottle. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice message because there's a, there's a bit of a true story there, isn't it, that it comes from? Yeah, well, the sort of catalyst for it was, I mean, loads of people, we've all done it. We certainly did it in primary schools. You put your message in a bottle, put it out and figure out where the tides go and all the rest of it. I mean, ours, we were sending it out from Malig and I don't think it got any further than Neudert. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but that notion of sort of this wee boy in Northern Ireland uh, put a message in a bottle. He was nine years old or 10 years old. He loved a girl in the class with him. She didn't notice him. We've all been there, heartbroken, wanted somebody oh. to know it, sent this message out in the bottle. And lo and behold, 10 years later, it washed up uh, in Cana, on the island of Cana in the Small Isles. And so that just sparked something in me, that and also the stories of St Kildans years ago, putting messages in, not quite bottles, but something similar, sending it out and having that ancient understanding of the tide of where it might wash up, Orkney, or it could be around to Scandinavia somewhere. It just sort of sparked something and, you know, what that bottle would see as it travelled through the oceans, the creatures that it might see, the stories that it might be able to tell. And sort of growing that innocent message, I suppose it's a bit of a metaphor for, you know, throwing that sort of message of love and hope out in the world, which I hope we still all have. But it growing to maybe a bigger message about our impact on the oceans as well, because obviously I couldn't do a project about the coast and the waters without uh, commenting on that. And our connections with the sea going back, you know, if you think of fishing, and all that we've gotten from the sea, but also what the sea has taken away from us as well, you know, thinking about, you know, troops going off to war and warships, loads of different things, the clearances. So there were so many elements that I could cover in it that it was actually hard to tame it down to a one hour live show and, and, and the equivalent music, you know, recorded down in the CD. So, yeah, so it was really lovely to have that sort of focus and, and journey. But that was sort of the sort of main catalyst behind it. And did you manage to make connection with the young lad at all? No, I didn't actually. No, um, I didn't pursue that. Because what ended up happening was I sort of took that letter and then loads of people went, oh, I've got another case of that. Oh, I've got another. And I was like, oh, all right, OK. OK, great. We all send messages in bottles. They go somewhere. Sometimes they land, sometimes they don't. So, no, I didn't. I didn't for that one. Well, I'm just wondering if the, if the young man was finally saw by the, the harsh woman. Probably not. Life's not like that. You know, he's probably like Finley. He's writing a sad song about it now and he's earning a fortune from it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show Life's her. Life's not that happy. <laughs> Either that or he's well, singing to toilet doors. I'm here today to tell you that it was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And, um... Uh, you also this year, or when the last, I mean, what is a year in COVID, you know? Exactly. Uh, you, the the Glenfinnan Kayleigh Band released another, uh, a new album, The Road to Glenfinnan. Yeah, we did actually. We, again, were able to use, we had recorded part of it, I think, in 2019. One of the great things about having your own studio is, you can go in whenever and do whatever. One of the bad things about having your own studio is you can go in whenever, you know? So if you're hiring somebody else's studio space, you tend to be a wee bit more disciplined about when you go in, when you rehearse and all the rest of it, rather than just rocking up and going, okay, here we go. So we had actually recorded about half of it in 2019. Then other things happened. We all do different things. You know, Ian and I play music. Colm is a teacher. Colm Arua is a teacher, but he also plays music. Ian McMaster has got other jobs as well. So, um, yeah, it took a wee while to come back together. Obviously, for part of last year, we couldn't. But it was lovely to be able to finish. So we finished it off, I think, last year, or released it last November. Uh, the Road to Glenfinnan, which is based on a tune that's actually on the album. And really, the, I mean, the Cayley Band was brought together for the sheer love of playing music. You know, we're just, we're all from Glenfinnan around here and we had been playing music sort of informally for years and then sort of just formalised it a bit more. So it's just, it's always fun. I mean, most of the music I do, I have to say, is really, really fun and enjoyable. But in particular, that's a lot of fun. And 
there's just there's no stress about it. There's a nice influence from Colm on the Irish side, Ian McMaster, my own Ian McFarlane. He, you know, there's the, the Gaelic element, the piping element. So it's not a sort of strip dance band dance band. So it's got lots of different elements in it. And obviously we've got the sort of folky elements in it too. There's a Gaelic song element in it as well. So it's just, it's really nice, but it's got a nice identity from the West Highlands. And Glenfinnan is so iconic that the cover as well, if, you know, is we did it off the, you know, the viaduct, Glenfinnan viaduct, obviously Harry Potter films it's famous from, and uh, other covers have had the monument in it. You know, there's, there's so much imagery from Glenfinnan. It's such a beautiful area that it's kind of a no-brainer to use it if you can. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the viaduct, actually, because I noticed this week is the 20th anniversary of the first Harry Potter film. Oh, my God, is it that long? Well, that's amazing. Now, my, with my other hat, community development hat on, I volunteer on the a sort of development group in Glenfinnan, and we've actually opened a car park to... Because we had we just had a bit of an over-tourism problem. And I'd, I don't want to say it's a problem, actually, because I totally get why people would want to come here and visit the Harry Potter thing, Body Prince Charlie, the scenery. But, uh, yeah, so I've been busy building car parks and footbridges <laughs> wow. and paths as well. That's, <laughs> not that's just fantastic. a musician. That's really cool. That's great. Yeah, I mean, not, I mean, obviously, I, they hired people in to do it. I mean, but I'm not <laughs> just going to do that you in a <laughs> Well, all those years of lifting Clark's axe have come in useful for something. Absolutely. The guns like, were ready to go. Yeah. Well, maybe we could just get Ingrid to make the car park. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, so, yeah, it was really funny because last year and amongst all the kind of stress of, ah, all the gigs have gone, all the work's gone. We were going, ah, we're supposed to build a car park as well. <laughs> And it happened oh God, amazingly. God. So, yeah, that's quite a nice thing. So, yeah, it's nice sort of wrapping up all those elements of where you're from and acknowledging, you know, the attraction of Glenfinnan within within the music side of things. Have you got too. any tips for building a car park? <laughs> yeah. yeah, don't do it in a pandemic. <laughs> yeah. That's my tip. That's my absolute tip. <laughs> Yeah, but Can it's been great. It's, it's a good a good solution to uh, yeah, and the community get the benefit of it. So there you go, everyone wins. And have you put in um, things for folk to stay overnight and to empty their tanks? You know, like the, not the yet. Van? We have pl we have phase two and three and four and five. We've got lots of plans for electric chargers and toilets oh, and you know emptying. Because this uh, sounds camp like the bit. This sounds like the future of the Highlands, like communities building their own car parks and are they called airs is that right oh yeah the that's for yeah the, the, for the camper vans yeah, to yeah well the thing is it's like rather than a uh, rather than complain about it it's great to be empowered give them to do to something about it and then the benefit comes into the local community and sometimes that can't happen because of you know uh -huh. who owns the land and all that and oh my goodness i'm turning into a politician <laughs> here i'm a tie no, there we go <laughs> That's the next career. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, before, yeah. so I'm looking forward to the interview in four years' time from Westminster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, never. <laughs> I couldn't keep my cool. Could never keep my cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's where the land, the people who own the, own the land is. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, yeah. Leah. Let's do another programme about that. I've got a lot to say about that. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get Alan in as well. <laughs> I don't think he's got any opinions on that that he's willing to share in a public forum. We'll, we'll do a late night version. <laughs> well, we're going to have another a wee... thing. <laughs> we're going to have a wee listen to a clip from Message in a Bottle by Cat Bruce. Uh, hopefully I'll pay the, play the right video this time.
Oh, beautiful <laughs> music there from Ingrid. <laughs> Uh, fantastic so guys thank you uh, very much for coming on today it's really much appreciated I wish you all the best of luck with your nomination and I'm really looking thank forward you. to seeing you in person I know it's going to be great yeah. are you coming Ingrid? yeah I'm planning it but because we're doing the new year Kaylee live and there's a plan A plan B plan C there might be a pre-record that's my only doubt over it we do the BBC Alaba Hogmanay show so ah, um, right. hopefully so yeah we'll figure it out well that's please because um, numbers are tricky just tell yeah. me as soon as you do know actually because that'll make yeah. everybody happy but an extra seat but you... Raja we'd rather have you on it oh yeah you're yeah. saying that now yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As he turns up drunk and talks about car parks all night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the bridges. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll turn up with the car park winnings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thanks very much, guys. We will be back next Thursday with another one of our Scots Trad Music Award sponsor broadcasts, and that's it. Uh, one o'clock uh, next Thursday but that's over a whole week away we've got so much to do in the meantime so thanks again and I'll see you later ta-da Video.